Hey friends, so Moog decided to put their Moog or Foger line of pedals out as plugins, and the capabilities are unbelievably cool. And so we'll be able to take a jam that sounds like this and turn it into this. Cool, so let's check it out. Okay, so I'm gonna mute the bass for now. Let's just go ahead and take a listen to the drums and this pad sound I made with Ableton Wavetable. So obviously the pad is very bright and it's kind of in the way. So let's first start with the most basic Mogra Foger pedal and that's just the filter. Now of course Moog's Ladder filter is probably the most popular filter that's ever come out in the world. Now this is not analog of course because it's a plugin, it's digital, right? But they did I think a pretty good job of doing their best to emulate this sound and the most classic sound being the four pole filter. Now that's without any resonance, with resonance of course. And then of course it screams <laughs> when you turn the resonance up. And that's kind of just a, of, of a feature of the original ladder filter. So with the resonance set around four, we get a really pleasing kind of sweep here. Now, of course, with the filter, one of the most fun things to do is to animate the cutoff frequency. So one thing we could do is we could feed the cutoff frequency some sort of modulation. Now, on board, we have a envelope, right? And so if I turn the envelope amount, what this will do is whatever the Mografoger is listening to, which at this point it's listening to the pad, it will apply that envelope to the cutoff frequency. So take a listen to what happens. Now... Right now, you can hear it go, whoa, whoa, it's just a, a little bit, right? What I could do is I could turn the drive up to make the signal going into the envelope higher. And you can also link, if you click this little link button, you can link the drive and the output so that you don't uh, <laughs> make the volume really high. So let's go ahead and do that. Notice that as I add drive, the output goes down and the envelope effect goes up. Now you can change the uh, speed of the envelope and then at higher speeds, you can hear the envelope kind of crack and fizzle and stuff like that. That's because it's getting constantly re-triggered because the release and the attack times are so fast, right? So that's a fun way to add a little bit of grit, right? But what I want to do is I'm going to turn this all the way down back to zero. What I want to talk about is that the whole idea with Mografogers is interconnectivity, okay? What could be cooler is to feed another Mografoger into the cutoff frequency to change it around. So let's go ahead and we're going to drop a filter onto the drums. Now, let's take a listen to the drums. Now, I don't necessarily want the filter to be on the drums, but what I do want to do is use the envelope follower from the drum track to trigger changes on the cutoff frequency on the pad track, okay? So what I'll do is I'll just deactivate this filter. I'll go back to the pad, and I'm going to click up here. Check it out. When you click up here, you can see, okay, there's some connectivity going on. Now, what I want to do is I want to animate the cutoff frequency. So if I click on this, I'm presented with two different envelopes, right? And what I want to choose is I want to choose the envelope from the drums. So I'll choose that envelope. And now I'll unsolo the drums and let's take a listen to what happens. Cool. So what we're doing is we're using this envelope to trigger this cutoff frequency on the pad. So what we can do is we can start to mess with this a little bit. And we can see the envelope amount right here. Now, of course, because we don't have as much drive as we might need, it's not having as much of an effect. So I can start to crank this up a little bit. I'll go ahead and link the drive and the output, and we're gonna get... Right? Sounds awesome. Now let's do something else. Let's go back to this track. So another thing to know is that the cutoff frequency can actually be positively or negatively affected. So right now we can see it's going into the positives from the cutoff frequency. It goes up here, right? But I think it'll sound better if we go into negative territory. Check this out. Let's try it on two pull mode. <laughs> awesome. Now we have a pretty cool sound. It kind of sounds like we've got like a side chain compressor going on, but instead it's a filter, right? Okay, cool. So let's reach for another Mografoger. Let's go with this delay. Now, 
you can go ahead and time sync the delay with this time sync and you can get some, you know, really, really pleasing delay sounds out of this. Let's just listen to the uh, pad by itself. And right now it doesn't have any feedback. If we add some. Right? Pretty classic analog kind of delay sound. And this is a really enjoyable thing to have. But what I want to do is I actually want to use this to make this pad sound a little bit crazier. Like it's a big unison pad. Like there's a lot more voices. And the way that you do that is that if you use this LFO side here, what this will do is it's a delay line. So it'll change the, the delay time uh, using this LFO. So the amount is actually just changing the delay time. Now what this will do in the analog domain is it will actually change the pitch. And so what this will do is this will give us a really big like unison kind of sound the more amount I add to this. So take a listen. <laughs> right? And, and then we can control the rate to make it go faster or slower. Nice, I like that sound. Now, I think this makes it sloppy, so I'm actually gonna put this delay before the filter. Now we get this sound. Super cool, right? Okay, let's reach for another Mogafoger. Let's go with the Cluster Flux. This thing is cool. So yeah, the Cluster Flux is awesome. It's essentially a flanger and a chorus. It's a delay line, but this time it's stereo. So when you mix the dry signal with the fully wet signal, you get this really nice big wide stereo sound. And I'm not a big fan of like a lot of feedback on a flanger. I like it light so you can just get that nice stereo. Perfect. So let's go ahead and listen to this with the drums. <laughs> cool. Let's go ahead and listen to this bass line. So now, let's go ahead and add the Murph. Yo, I teach Ableton a lot. If you're tired of spinning your wheels on YouTube and you wanna learn music production correctly and efficiently, I'm your mango. You can check out my Ableton speed training session here where I distill my top 10 tips for making music in Ableton Live. Okay, let's get back to it. So yeah, the Murph is incredible. Essentially what it is is it's an array of filters that have fixed frequencies. And if I turn some of them down here on this bass, It kind of acts like a pretty weak graphic EQ, right? <laughs> but what makes this so awesome is that you can actually animate the filters. So if you start to turn pattern up and then you turn sync on, take a listen to this. So all of these patterns are just basically sequencers stepping through the different filters and playing them one at a time. So you can change the envelope quality of it by making it more snappy by going this way. And as you bring the envelope this way, you start to make the attack longer. And you can also change the rate. So we could maybe make this slower. So essentially what the Murph can do is super animate your stuff. Now you might be looking at this and being like, okay, you're using a bass, you should probably switch it to bass mode. So what's up with this? Well, essentially you can see that there are two different uh, filter frequencies available for each of these filters. And that's essentially what the switch does. It switches between these and these. Now, even in the manual, it suggests that if you're using bass to switch it to bass mode, I'm not necessarily sure I agree. I think it's just two different voicings. So maybe one you like more than the other. Let's go ahead and use the bass one and take a listen. So as you can see, there's just kind of a different sound, right? Uh, maybe in your situation, you would make your bass line and also make like a sine waveform or a slightly dirty sign for your sub aspect. And maybe it makes more sense to use mids, right? Cool, so now that you know what it's doing, let's go ahead and maybe uh, dial this in with the rest of the jam and kind of figure out maybe something fun to do with it, so.
cool, so I like this setting, but it's kind of static. Now, another thing you can do is you can turn these down differing amounts and you get these really fun kind of like syncopated rhythms. Because if you could visualize it, it's going one, two, three, four, like kind of stepping through these filters. And if one of them's all the way down, it'll skip a step, right? Cool, so let's do something else. Let's take a listen to what happens when I pull the mix out. That's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and mess with this. So I'm gonna click up here, revealing the CV connections. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on mix. So on mix, I'm gonna choose that same envelope that I originally chose from the drums. And as I pull this down, take a listen. Super cool. So another thing you might have noticed is that on the bass we have this LFO switch. Now what does this thing do? Essentially what this is is it will animate the filter's cutoff frequency. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the LFO amount, make sure the LFO is on, and I will choose DC. Now what this does is this allows you to just simply use the knob or Ableton if you want to use Ableton's parameters, right? You can see it kind of appear here, LFO amount. It'll allow you to actually automate this. So I'm just going to turn this up a little bit and take a listen to the difference as I turn it up. I'll go ahead and make the mix all the way wet for a second. We can hear that LFO sweeping those frequencies. Okay, so I'm going to bring the envelope back down. Super cool. So let's go ahead and listen to the whole jam now that we've got all these really cool changes made. Okay, and so maybe for a final touch, let's do something really creative. I'm gonna make a new audio track and I'm gonna feed it from the first drum track. So I'll set it to in, and now we have another track basically playing the drums. And so this time I'm gonna reach for the freak box. So I'll go ahead and mute everything else and I'll turn the mix all the way up on this. So now we just get the drums and this freak box. And so what this thing is, is a VCO that has the amplitude and the filter frequency uh, all controllable. Okay, so let's take a listen to this. If I turn up the FM amount and the envelope amount, we can get kind of a <laughs> pretty ridiculous sound. Right? Pretty nonsensical. But let's grab another Murph and put it after it. And check this out. Now that we have this really nice and bright signal, we can kind of make some weird hats out of it. So maybe something like... Go ahead and sync it. Now, one more thing about the Murph that's cool is that you can look at these options right here and you can change some of these things. The envelope peaks can be pronounced and you you actually have an alternative envelope mode. And you don't have to use it in stereo, you can switch it to mono. So let's go ahead and mess with the envelope now. <laughs> okay, that's weird. Cool, I like it. Let's go ahead and play it with everything else. I think my final step is I'll copy the filter from the pad and put it on here just so we can get a little bit of filtering going on. And I'll have to turn this up, of course. Nice.
Word, so the Mogafoger plugins are really fun, especially when you connect them together. It really opens up some creative potential for making really new sounds. Of course, the Murph will always have a special place in my heart, and I'm really happy that I have it at my fingertips now. Anyway, I hope you like this video. If this is your kind of thing, you know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching.